here with Dallas Stewart it, back in uh, Horse Haven. I have to ask you, you have Chess Chief coming up for his stakes tomorrow. How the horse been training? He's been doing pretty good. He had a layoff and he's had one race. So uh, he likes it up here and he's had a good work over the Oklahoma track. We're hoping to be competitive with this group. Tough field of horses and, uh, you know, go forward from there. Really tough field of six. Horses won at this distance grade three before. You're bringing up Relu Gutierrez. We have a very capable jockey colony up here, but it seems like you're sticking with what you've known. Any reason for that? Like you said, he's very capable. He's won a big stake on this horse. He's ridden him a couple of times, gets along good with him. He's a top class rider, just needs a break. He can compete with these guys. I love that when people are bringing new guys into the colony, really starting to shake it up a little bit here. Last question for you, in terms of your barn up here, any two-year-olds that we should be looking forward to coming out? Well, we've got a really nice two-year-old filly right here. She was second in the debutante. She's a Louisiana bred. Her name is Sabra Tuff. She's going to run in the uh, Adirondack, you know, and then hopefully the uh, um, uh, spin away. So, and then go on from there. But she's very nice. She's a winner. We've got a couple other two-year-olds that are running the auction races that were bought uh, pretty reasonable and look like they can run. So that's what we got. Well, good luck with the 2022 meet. Thank you so much. Here with Al Stahl Jr. back in... Right behind the tra right behind the main track, uh, horses are training this morning. You have a stakes race going tomorrow. Hopefully, if the heat index doesn't get too high, can you tell us a little about the horse? Well, it's Mass Parade. He ran here last year. He was third in the Jim Dandy and didn't run so well in the Travers. We gave him a long layoff all winter long, and he's come back really well. He's had two great races at Churchill Downs. He's set up for a big effort for tomorrow. We're looking forward to it. In terms of your barn this year, is your barn size bigger or smaller than normal? The same, the same. The makeup's a little different than normal. I have less two-year-olds than I normally do, but uh, it's the same amount. Speaking of two-year-olds, anybody that you have coming up that we should be aware of? Um, I've got a couple two-year-olds that I like, and we're going to maybe run one Sunday called Gilcrease, more than ready colt, who uh, is acting pretty smart. Uh, we'll try him five and a half on the turf. He'll run rain or shine, and uh, it'll be our first one of the meet to run, or no, our second one. And uh, we think he's pretty nice cold. You just said uh, rain or shine. When you have two-year-olds coming up, do you, if they do get rained off, is that something that you'll usually do? You'll run them even if they go onto the dirt? It depends. It depends. This horse has never been on the turf in his life, obviously. So uh, I take that back. We worked him in Oklahoma once, but uh, and it, that was fine. But he's worked well on the dirt, so we would definitely run him either way. Well, I appreciate your time, and good luck in the stakes tomorrow. No, thank you. Here with Jason Barkley back at Barn 79 behind the Oklahoma. Jason, can you tell me a little about what your plans are for the 2022 Saratoga meet? Uh, you know, it's our first kind of opportunity up here this year um, with bringing some different horses, some better caliber horses up. Um, you know, we brought five up for opening weekend. We had a couple seconds. Uh, really excited about setting on the wise here in second allowance race opening weekend. And uh, this weekend we've got TD Dance for the lure and a, a two-year-old Philly by Cantheros that we're pretty excited about. So uh, just looking forward to getting some opportunities, getting some eyes on us and, uh, you know, taking our swings. A barn that's coming up here from Kentucky, can you tell me a little about back and forth from Ellis? Are you, are you going to be shipping more horses up towards the end of the meet? Or are you just staying with what you have here for now? Uh, so we're kind of rotating them in and out, you know, as we see fit. Uh, once condition books come out, we kind of pick the spots. Um, you know, the first group we had up here is already back in Kentucky, and we've rotated a new group up this time. And we're still running at Ellis, and I've kind of got my dad kind of holding down the fort there, uh, running the show while we're up here, uh, just kind of getting getting them all rolling. Seems like the pattern at Saratoga this year, the father and son duos, we have we have Cox, we have Clement. It seems like that that's usually a good working relationship. Can you tell me a little bit about this horse that you have coming this Saturday for the lure? Uh, TV dance for the lure on Saturday. You know, really excited about him. Uh, last time out. You know, we added blinkers and he was a little too keen. Um, so we've cut the blinker cut back on him. Uh, we left the blinkers on just to kind of get him to focus a little more. And he's been really relaxed in his breezes. He worked very nice, easy hash here the other day on the turf, uh, just setting up for this race. And uh, Louis I is going to be in the saddle. So pretty excited to uh, get our opportunity. With Louis up, you're always going to get a good ride. Um, last question for you. You mentioned a two-year-old earlier. Any other two-year-olds that we should be looking forward to? Uh, I have a colt tapping out a tune that we brought up here to train. Uh, he won't make the meet, but we are just kind of getting some uh, fitness into him, getting him ready for the Churchill September meet. He is a $450,000 tapper and colt we bought from OBS, the two-year-old sale in March. Uh, just really excited to get get the ball rolling with him and uh, you know get him get his debut underway. I actually have one more for you. You know, uh, you are up here it's just in Saratoga. Any plans to leave some horses up here for the Aqueduct, well, Belmont at Aqueduct meet uh, this coming fall? I don't know that we'll stay, but we 
we'll definitely be looking to ship and run some. I'm um, pretty excited about you know getting the getting our foot in the door in New York and being able to have that as an avenue to you know further down the road. Well, good luck with the rest of the 2022 meet. Thank you. We're with Matthew O'Connor back at Barn 33, right at the top of the uh, top of the turn. Uh, Matthew, you got a, a runner going tomorrow. Can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, you know, I mean, we claimed him for 25 at Belmont last year, and lucky enough, we're on second in the claiming crown and winning grade three at Gulfstream with him, and kind of tailed off a little on form, but we feel he's coming back into his cycle. This is the time of the year last year. He came into form and ran well last year, so, you know, we gave him a little bit of class relief. It's still a real tough race, but this is Saratoga, so that's to be expected, and, you know, hopefully it gives a good effort. So you were an Arizona, University of Arizona program graduate. Um, you're probably the youngest trainer on the on the grounds right now. Can you tell us a bit about what it's like to be the young guy in the, in the group of uh, some of the best in the business? Hey, you know, we, I grew up on the backside of Naira tracks and we grew up looking up to these guys. And, you know, it's a tough industry when you're young and you kind of just got to grind your teeth and just work hard and try to build up your business as time goes on and you know the time will come when we'll get more support and we just got to show what we could do on the racetrack here in our younger years and hopefully things snowball effect and we get bigger over time you know so can you tell me about the size of your barn this year i know you, you spoke to me you said you were trying to grow your barn can you tell me what you guys are doing yeah so we had we got three here this year we had a baby we had to send back to the farm and well we're gonna end up staying the winter here in new york so probably go to the New York bread sale and try to get some more New York breads and kind of get in with some some more claiming owners and stuff like that and hopefully over the winter grow the stable big enough to where we could be somewhat competitive come springtime at Belmont. Last question for you in terms of claiming have you gone in for any claims up here it seems like we got an 18 21 yeah, 23 you know, way shakes uh, it seems like it's a competitive way to claim up here right now. Yeah I mean it's tough up here uh, First, you gotta you gotta find an owner who's not claiming with another trainer first, and then you gotta win an astronomical shake. But they're shaking for good horses up here, and that's to be expected. So, I mean, try to get lucky. You just need luck all around in this game. Well, good luck tomorrow with your starter. Thank you.